We practiced at Burnett Stadium. Did any, I don't know if any of you would ever remember in Dallas, there was an old Burnett Park. Anyway, they condemned it. They had rats about this long. And we had, the first year I was with the Cowboys, we had to hang up our uniforms with coat hangers or anything leather, like shoes, shoulder pads, or the helmets with the inserts. They would eat it up during the night. You would come back in your shoes and all that would just be destroyed. And that was back in the days when we had to buy our own shoes. <laughs> Bob Lilly and the infant Dallas Cowboys walked barefoot on bumpy paths that offered few glimpses of the glory roads that both were destined to travel. This country boy from Throckmorton, Texas, revolutionized the position of defensive tackle with a stunning combination of speed and strength. Strength formed not by weights and pulleys, but farm work. Lily was the boy at the county fair who wrestles the bear and wins. I think the most unusual thing about Bob Lilly was if you put 50 people in a room, you know, and had them stripped down to where they just had the shorts on, he would be the last guy you would pick. If, you know, he just didn't have the, the physique that you thought a football player had, no muscle definition whatsoever. He didn't epitomize the professional athlete, in my opinion, because he was kind of soft. It wasn't hard as a brick, you know, he was kind of soft. And that's the way he played, kind of soft. He didn't really kill anybody, but he, he made the plays, always made the plays. It's not how hard you hit, you know, but how good you tackle. In 12 years that I played against Lily, I, I really don't remember having even a decent game against him. He'd grab you and pull you, and he had tremendous quickness and tremendous reach and, and strength. Bob Lilly was just a great football player, and we never could get him to line up on side. We always thought he lined up off sides and complained to the officials, and nothing happened. So Cornelius Johnson one night was nauseated, and uh, he just regurgitated on Lilly's hands, and that way we got him off the ball. In fact, he stood up and stood well back so that we could snap the ball and run the play of our choice. Where Lilly did stand was at the forefront as the Cowboys gained power and prestige. He was a man among boys, the unstoppable, unblockable force of the doomsday defense. Opponents could neither contain him with a single player, nor run away from him. So they afforded Lilly the ultimate tribute. He was a guy that if they double teamed him, he beat him, if they triple teamed him. And very few people I've ever played with, I've never seen many people triple team. He's the only player I've, I've ever been associated with when we watch films on Monday that the other, his peers, including myself, would be there in awe and actually would ooh and awe during the film watching him do the things he could do. I remember seeing the guard pull, and the center tried to cut him off. When the guard pulls, the center tries to make the block on Lilly, and Lilly jumped over the center, weighing 260 pounds. And I just was in awe of that, and never, and never forgot that. That he had quick feet. Uh, nobody could get into him. Nobody could block him. He would shiver him. The guards would try to get into him, and he would have him and control him. He'd toss him aside. You know, he would take his hand. And, and hit his eye. I mean, hit his eye, and he wouldn't blink. And that takes a lot of work. I used to ask him, you know, Bob, what are you doing? I noticed that when you shut your eyes, like if, if you're on the line, you have a tendency a lot of times when the contact is made to blink your eyes. And so I used to sit in the meeting rooms all the time, and I'd go like this, and I'd just do, hit my eyeballs even. Oh, yeah, he used to, and I thought he was nuts, you know. Him and Andre and, and all them guys would be sitting there, and they'd be hitting it. I said, what in the heck? You know, they've gone schizo on us, you know. When I was playing up there, I would concentrate on the man across from me so much that I could see his whiskers. I would see every little whisker in his face. I would watch the ball over here, and the minute it was snapped, I would go, and I would hit this guy, but never blink my eyes so I could see which side he was trying to get on. Lily left foes bent but not bloodied, a trait many viewed as a curse, not a compliment. Well, here was this big guy, and he, and he was quiet. He was just kind of gentle because he was so quick and, and fast, and he was running over people, taking on two blockers and, and beating them, and yet he wasn't, he wasn't really that mean. I mean, that just wasn't my style. I don't know whether it's, you know, was the way I was brought up or whether it was just that I just wasn't a very mean person, you know, and I, it, it was something I just couldn't do if I wasn't that way. 
Bob Lilly was more like a Bengal tiger, that he didn't really have to confront people and beat them up. Now, he could leap over them, or go around them, or be smarter than they were, and still make the play. Lily's style was clean and pure, without a trace of nastiness. But when this cowboy was bushwhacked, he meted out frontier justice. We played him in an exhibition game in Texas Stadium. And he was coming off the guard, and I just unloaded with the best shot I had, probably the only good shot I had in 12 years against him. I hit him right in the sternum, you know, came up and, and got him in the chin. And he stepped back and he slugged me. I looked at him and I said, Bob, I don't believe you did that. I mean, it was... It was like he did something that uh, it was totally out of character for him. Lily and the Cowboys were sucker punched with the nickname Next Year's Champions. Despite playing brilliantly in consecutive title game losses to the Packers and in a bitter defeat to the Colts in Super Bowl V, Lily was lumped in with a team called Heartless and Gutless. Dallas Cowboys, Brad's Maids of the NFL. That was a tag that we heard everywhere we went. It was every paper, bridesmaids. And it's a, that's a tag that a, a pro football player just doesn't like. I think when we won the Super Bowl of beating Miami, that that was like somebody lifted off a 100-pound weight off all of us. The Dolphins sank under his weight in Super Bowl VI, as did the myth that the Cowboys were chokers. He was the team's oldest player, and perhaps more than anyone else understood and celebrated the significance of this victory. Bob Lilly was a gifted athlete. He was a player that was uh, so superior to the people around him. The guy had strength, he had quickness. It took two or three guys to block him. The best player I ever coached. In 1974, Bob Lilly retired. He was the Cowboys' first number one draft pick, their first All-Pro, their first inductee into the Ring of Honor, and their first Hall of Famer. Mr. Cowboy had traveled the glory road from Throckmorton, Texas, to Canton, Ohio.